Before we get down to the nitty gritty, I want to thank my animators Adam Mitsuk or Kuzim and Tyler Addison for the animations in this video. If you like their work, consider following them on Twitter. Links in the description and comment section below. Now, on with the show. The Morrison Formation is a world-renowned layer of rock that dates to the late Jurassic period. Many animals have been uncovered from these layers, including the largest and most adeptly qualified salad munchers and steak cutters to ever walk the face of the planet. One of these animals carried three crests atop its craggly skull, a line of armored scoots down its back, and a pair of small but handy arms. Meet your old friend, Ceratosaurus. Food chain me up, daddy. The American specimens of Ceratosaurus come exclusively from the Morrison Formation. This huge layer of rock, containing many smaller distinct layers of rock, dates to between 156 and 146 million years ago. This span of time includes the Oxfordian, Kimmeridgian, and Tithonian stages of the late Jurassic period. At these times, the environment consisted of swampy lowlands lush with aquatic plants and animals. Lake. River channels and floodplains were also distributed across the ecosystem. The rock strata show evidence that these places were semi-arid environments that saw a distinct change in seasons, from wet monsoons to dry periods. Ceratosaurus were similar to the hyenas of today in one particular way. That is, they were one of the largest of the smaller predators more than capable of taking down anything smaller than themselves, as well as potentially dangerous prey like smaller allosaurs, stegosaurs, and maybe even young sauropods. Alongside Ceratosaurus lived the much smaller theropods Stochisosaurus, Solurus, Coperion, Hesperornithoides, Marshosaurus, Tanicalagrius, and Ornitholestes, which offered little competition of threat to Ceratosaurus. The often much larger Allosaurus and Torvosaurus would have been the animals Ceratosaurus had to look out for. Allosaurus and Torvosaurus acted as the lions of the ecosystem, being larger and more capable of taking down the more dangerous animals of the time, which included <gasps> Stegosaurus, Hesperosaurus, Mimurpelta, Gargoylosaurus, Haplocanthosaurus, Marupunisaurus, Suasia, Gelampus, Caetidacus, Smetanosaurus, Barosaurus, Dislocosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus, Apatosaurus, Supersaurus, Camarasaurus, and Brontosaurus. <sighs> Smaller ornithischians lived as quick-footed herbivores that were probably the more common targets of the medium-sized theropods. And these animals included <gasps> Camptosaurus, Frutidens, Eutiodon, Nanosaurus, Dryosaurus, Drinker, Othneilosaurus, and Othnelia. <gasps> Along with these dinosaurs lived many other creatures including amphibians, insects, spiders, lungfish, champsosaurs, lizards, crocodiles, mammals, turtles, snakes, and pterosaurs. I love listing off things. The fauna found in the Tendaguru beds, where the African Ceratosaurus was found, contains a bunch of similar dinosaurs. The Tendaguru formation is just like the Morrison in being a dummy Thick. layer of rock containing a bunch of smaller distinct layers and it ranges from about Middle Jurassic to Early Cretaceous in age, about 174 to 145 million years ago. The rocks deposited in the Mandava Basin preserve a semi-arid climate that retained more moisture than areas further inland due to the coast bringing in hot, wet air. Like what's observed in the Morrison Formation, the Tendaguru records a repeated shift from shallow marine to tidal flat habitats. Once the sea retreated, animals would live in the semi-arid tidal flat areas and leave behind their remains. How gracious of them. Among the largest of the Tendaguru beasts was Giraffa Titan, a Brachiosaurus look-alike known from far more complete material. Instead of the huge billboard-backed Stegosaurus, this environment was home to the infernally spiky Kentrosaurus, which was about half as big. Instead of Dryosaurus or Othnelia, there was Dysalotosaurus, 
a swift bipedal herbivore with small arms and beak. There wasn't a Patasaurus or Brontosaurus here, instead there were the short-necked Dicreosaurs, like Dicreosaurus itself. This millions year old lair also contained early titanosaurs, like the Sampospondyl Astrolodicus, or the Macronarian Yanentia. Teriosaurs, bizarre Brachiosaur Camarasaur lookalikes, were common in Africa in the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods, and are represented here by Tendaguria, the Mementisaurids, those noodle necked Ceriscians known for necks longer than their bodies and tails combined, were here too in the form of Wamwarkadia. Remains of Allosaurs, Carcharodontosaurids, and Torvasaurs have been found in this formation. However, due to their fragmentary nature and the date of their description, they probably represent close relatives of the true Torvasaurus and Allosaurus of North America and Europe. Most of the North American dinosaur groups of the late Jurassic were mirrored in Africa, but tweaked by their unique biogeography. Ceratosaurus is the odd one out in this regard. Elaphrosaurus is an almost chimeric creature that remained unidentifiable without close relatives to point to. Its most recent identification places it as a member of the Noasauridae group, which were small to medium sized, little armed, long necked critters that came in two flavors fly trap mouthed finger nippers or fast growing toothless beaked speedsters. The tooth of the early Spinosaur, Ostafricosaurus, means the African Ceratosaurus was brushing tails with the predecessors to the true rulers of the waterways. Aside from the dinosaurs, Ceratosaurus came face to face with crocs like Bernisartia, amphibians, fish of all sorts, mollusks, and a bunch of mammals. This was only the second place Ceratosaurus remains have been found though. Another entire Geochron waits for us in Portugal. Third verse, same as the first. The Lorinha Formation of Portugal is another giant cake slice of rock with little layers of smaller cakes and icings held inside. This formation is more similar to the Morrison Formation than either are to the Tendaguru Formation. Like the others though, it too shows shifts from marine and near marine sediments to tidal flat dry periods. Confirmed remains of Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and Torvasaurus come from these deposits. Torvasaurus and Allosaurus remains are distinct enough to justify new Portuguese species, distinct from the American ones. Aside from the big three, there was the unplaceable Lorinhanosaurus, which could be an Allosauroid, a Sinraptorid, or a Megalosauroid. There was the itty bitty early Carcharodontosaurid Lusovenator. A large diplodocid lived here in the form of Dinarosaurus, which may be a member of the Supersaurus genus. The Camarasaurid, Lorenhosaurus, Brachiosaur Lusotitan, Early Titanosaur Oceanotitan, and Teriosaur Zibi stomped around the place, making our beloved Ceratosaurus uncomfortable. Someone please think of the Ceratosaurus. The other side of the dinosaur tree, the Ornithischians, were present here too, like Stegosaurus decentris, Rargaia, and some possible Stegosaurus fossils. Dracopelta was the resident early small boy Ankylosaur. Meanwhile, there were the Ornithopods Draconix, Dryosaurus, Eostriosaurus, and Phylodon. Of course, like any good late Jurassic ecosystem, the Lorinha Formation contains a good diversity of mammals, fish, invertebrates, and pterosaurs. Can't we all just get along? As I have previously touched on, all bone beds where Ceratosaurus material is found, the remains of other predators, usually of a greater size, are found as well, and in higher frequency. This is even the case in equivalent bone beds of other continents. Ceratosaurus is there, right alongside the other two massive brutes, Allosaurus and Torvosaurus. In 1998, Donald Henderson analyzed the remains of these predators and each locality they are found in to help elucidate any details that may help figure out how they could all live together without competing with one another for resources. Many theropods that are spread out across entire continents have shown different morphs that suggest different adaptations to different environments, which is just going to happen when you stretch an entire genus or species across such a large region. 
This can be seen in the gracile and robust morphs of Tyrannosaurus and many other large predators with rich fossil records. This can also be said for Ceratosaurus' contemporary, Allosaurus. Henderson tried to find out how all these animals could avoid directly competing with one another. Because if you have two or more species of animals occupying the same niche or a place in the food chain, then they will directly compete with one another over the same food source, eventually forcing one or the other to adapt, die, or leave. The more in common these two or more species have in appearance, behavior, or anatomy, the more likely they are to compete with one another for resources. Henderson compared Ceratosaurus and two morphs of Allosaurus, a short muzzled morph and a long muzzled morph, and found that the long muzzled morph competed more with Ceratosaurus than did the short muzzled morph, which means that the long muzzled Allosaurus morph and the Ceratosaurus shared a similar ecological niche and may have hunted similar prey. In localities where the long muzzled Allosaurus is common, the Ceratosaurus is uncommon, and vice versa. The long snouts of Ceratosaurus and the long-muzzled Allosaur are built more for tearing into prey and delivering quick, slashing bites that whittle away the prey's stamina, while the short snout of the short-muzzled Allosaur is built for a strong, powerful bite akin to cats. This differentiates between predators and allows them to live together without directly competing with one another. But that is to say nothing of what they'd do to each other if they came face to face. But what exactly is Ceratosaurus? What are you doing, step bro? When this animal was discovered, no one really knew what it was. Since it was found during a time in which paleontology was a relatively new field, and only a handful of theropods were known from what you could call complete remains, Othniel Charles Marsh had to scour the Ceratosaurus bones for characteristics that would tell him what it was and who it was related to. He saw characteristics in the pelvis and metatarsals that were found only in birds, giving another early example of the paleontological link between birds and their non-avian ancestors. Since this animal was quite different from Allosaurus, Megalosaurus, and the growing collection of Salurosaurs, incorrectly termed Carnosaurs, Marsh created a separate infraorder which he named Ceratosauria. This held only Ceratosaurus for many decades, with the only change being the further specification of the family Ceratosauridae, which again held only Ceratosaurus. This made the Ceratosauridae fall out of use, until the discovery of animals that were undoubtedly more closely related. During the early 1900s, lithe Triassic carnivores like Coelophysis were found to contain some skeletal similarities to Ceratosaurus. Then the discoveries of Abelosaurs in the 1980s and 90s showed that the short-skulled baby-armed theropods were descended from animals like Ceratosaurus. Geniodectes, a very fragmentary genus from South America, is considered another member in the Ceratosauridae due to the overly large teeth it had in its mouth, similar in shape to those of Ceratosaurus. Vostrovenator is another genus ascribed to this group, but being so fragmentary it is still on shaky ground. Only new taxa will help to better outline the evolutionary history of this startling animal. Lamestream Media being one of the first complete theropod remains from North America, in a time in which dinosaur fossils of good quality were becoming more well known, but still languished in the dark, Ceratosaurus fast became a well known animal. Its striking head crest and raptorial presence lent this animal to being a star in art very well. It has been reproduced in two dimensions hundreds of times since its discovery, with well-known artists Charles R. Knight, J. M. Gleason, and John Sibick being among the many that have done so. Ceratosaurus has also appeared on the silver screen many times. Ray Harryhausen used the animal's 1950s likeness in the movie One Million Years B.C. It is shown fighting a Triceratops, but we're not even gonna get into that logistical nightmare. The animal appears in Disney's Fantasia in the short titled Rite of Spring, however, it is highly stylized. Ceratosaurus also briefly appears in Jurassic Park 3, in which the main characters are spooked by its appearance, at which point the Ceratosaurus becomes spooked by the smell of another dinosaur's droppings. 
Ceratosaurus has appeared in way too many other things since these things that I'm just not going to talk about it. I'm going to save it for another video though. This genus is a fascinating one. The bulldog-like hyena of the Jurassic, it appears to be the most crocodilian of nearly all dinosauria, with an assortment of scoots and protective bony adornments, as well as a confident smile only an alligator could love. This predator has captured the imagination in such a way that we would never forget it, and only more finds of this rare creature will continue to open our minds to the horned reptile. Let me know what you think about Ceratosaurus in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a like and comment on this video, share it around and subscribe. While you're at it, ring the notification bell too if you want to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Want to help Edge out? Subscribe to the Patreon at any tier you like for a whole smorgasbord of delicious offerings. Many thanks to Thea Svensson, Steve Bradshaw, Staniforth Hopkins, Natty Cat, Dinosaur, Arda Bayer, Abby Smith, Henry Brennan, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Antron. You've all helped to make this channel possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you.